thank you for watching. Today I'm with Christian Tools, the current Welsh champion, uh, and we're going to be having a talk about his life and career, and we're going to be having a talk about some of the charity work that he does, uh, his background, and uh, a few other things like that. So thank you all for watching. Tuzi, thank you for um, taking the time to have a chat with me today, mate. I do appreciate it. Yeah, thanks to yourself as well. And, um, you know, hi to everyone watching. Um, and as he said, yeah, super featherweight Welsh champion here, Christian Tuz. And uh, obviously, me and Liam, uh, we'll see what we've got to talk about. Sounds good. So, yeah, I mean, one of the things I want to start with, Tuzi, is just um, obviously you do a lot of work in the community. Uh, it is, you know, it's been quite well sort of publicised before that you actually um, give away, you know, a portion of your fight earnings and you and you contribute to various causes in your community. Um, can you sort of tell us a little bit about um, about that, about what you do and why you do it in that area, please? Yeah. So, um, well, you know, take, taking it back, obviously, as a as a kid, obviously, I wanted to um, grow up. Be obviously, you know, as all kids do, watching these you know, superheroes on TV and stuff. I wanted to be some sort of hero. Um, and obviously I had in my head being a soldier um, and helping other people. And uh, obviously as I got a bit older, I started boxing and then uh, I wanted to just stick to the boxing. So I didn't end up going into the army when I first left school, um, hoping, you know, to turn professional and what have you. Um, and then obviously, you know, it got to a point then where, things weren't going where I wanted them to with a job. And um, obviously I had bills to pay on an apartment at the time on my car. So I decided then to go into the army and obviously, you know, follow that dream out. And um, obviously hearing about the boxing team in the army, um, you know, I thought I'd get onto that. So I had trials for that during training, which I got selected for and went into the army boxing team then. And um, yeah, so when I left the army, Obviously, I wanted to continue doing something, you know, for other people, um, you know, being a hero or an inspiration or what have you. Um, so I got in touch then with some uh, local families. Um, I found out about a local, first of all, um, Demi James, um, which was suffering from cancer. And um, I asked the family if it was all right to meet up. And um, obviously, I started donating there from the start of my professional career. And um, I followed it out throughout my professional career, donating to different families and similar causes, um, helping, you know, local kids fighting cancer or, you know, I've sometimes donated to um, youngsters' families who have, you know, for example, commit suicide. Um, and obviously, yeah, that's, that's obviously, I feel I'd rather put my money towards those kind of things and help other people and see them happy. Um, and put the money to better use than just going on a holiday or, you know, flashcards and stuff. But, um, yeah, I'd rather see that and get the respect for that rather than, you know, the respect for other people or being money hungry. It's a lot of sense. And it's, it's nice to hear. I mean, um, obviously, particularly these days when you see so much, particularly in boxing, when you see so much sort of money orientation, um, it's, it's nice to hear a different, like a more meaningful um, perspective and funny enough it was my next question because you touched on on your army um, experience there which is going to be my next question um, tell us a little bit about that I mean you were boxing in the army um, what was that experience like overall um, yeah it was a great experience um, it's, it's different obviously the civvy street like obviously you know where before I went in the army I boxed for nine years with um, Enzo Macronelli's dad Mario Macronelli which obviously a lot of people in the boxing world um, no, you know, to myself was the best boxing trainer out there and like a dad to myself. Um, so, yeah, I grew up boxing with himself. And then, then um, I joined the army then after things not going the way I'd hoped, um, wit-wise to afford the apartment a car I had at the time, etc. cetera. And, um, yeah, so I went in the army. I'd done my um, phase one training, which was the infantry training. Then I'd done my phase two training, which was combat engineering training. And then, um, obviously, I had my other training then as a sparky in the army. Um, and then during that time, I got sent on a two-week trial with the boxing team. Um, they were happy to take me on, but it was towards the end of the season. So I ended up boxing a few months for the um, core boxing team, um, which obviously the fights I had were for, for the army, but through the core. 
And then, um, obviously, I went from there then at the end of the season after summer to the Army team then, um, down in Aldershot. And obviously, they've got coaches, you know, from different parts of the country with different experience. And it was great, obviously, for them to give us, you know, different bag work, tr drills, um, circuits, you know, pad work. And then, obviously, they would take us around the country um, sparring with different people. You know, I sparred with um, a few people up in Scotland, the Scotland team. Um, done a lot of sparring with Carl Frampton. He would come to the army team or we would go to London. Um, and yeah, you know, obviously a great range of sparring in the army and a great range of coaching and different kind of techniques. So it was, it was obviously good experience. What about your, you know, your overall army experience? I mean, where, like, where were you based um, for like most of your army career? And uh, actually, how long, how long were you in the army in total? Just a few things, few things like that. Um, yeah, so I was in the army. I served the Shire six year. Um, I was in Baz and born to do the basic training, and then I got sent to Jib in um, Hampshire to do my phase two A training, um, and then I got obviously sent to Aldershot then, where I would do my um, trade courses, um, i.e. Um, electrician, um, and then I went from there, well, I was supposed to go from there to my unit, which was in Essex, um, but obviously I got selected for the boxing team, so I got sent to Tidworth then to train with the core team until until I then went to Aldershot um, after that season had finished. So they were obviously the places I had been. And then I think I spent four and a half years of that time in the army boxing team, only serving three years at my unit. Um, so, yeah, I, I got asked to go on, you know, um, I was attached to a IED bomb disposal unit. So I had got asked to go on courses to do with bomb disposal and, you know, wherever I wanted to go on tour to Afghan. And um, obviously I was in two minds, but, you know, I really wanted to go for the experience, but obviously, you know, with Afghan, obviously being all the IEDs and stuff, it was a dangerous move to make for the boxing. I mean, one eye or foot injury or what have you, then that's my boxing career over for life, which would have killed me inside. Um, so, yeah, obviously my officer asked me to stay back then and box for um, different championships rather than obviously go on tour. So, that's obviously the route I went down then, sticking with the boxing team. And going back um, a little bit further, because, I mean, we, we touched on um, your training prior to the Army now, so even though we're moving around in time a little bit, but that's OK. And you touched on training with uh, Mario uh, Macronelli. And, I mean, when you were growing up, obviously you talked to a lot of boxers and they've sort of got that history of, you know, street fighting and getting in trouble and this, that and the other and all the rest of it. I mean, is that something that was sort of um, the case for yourself or was it more just sort of that you just liked the sport and um, went to a gym? I mean, how did it all start, like in, in the very beginning, basically, is what I'm asking? It was quite of a coincidence, really. Like, um, obviously, first of all, I passed the boxing gym. Yeah, I was getting up to this and that, obviously, as boys do. And um, I passed the boxing gym with a few of my mates and we went in for a look. And um, we was watching some sparring and what have you. And then um, they said, oh, shall we come back next week? So, you know, I ended up going back next week, but only with one of the lads in the end out of, I don't know, a group of five or six of us. And, um, well, I was the one to stick it out. And then I think it was only maybe a month or two after I started. Um, my mum, well, we was moving a dress and I said to Mario uh, Macronelli at the time that... Um, I'm moving, moving to Carmarthen, I said, so I'm not going to be able to um, box here no more. And uh, he took me home that night, in fairness, and he spoke to my mum, and um, she said, oh, no, he's got it all wrong. Obviously, I was uh, nine, ten years old at the time, and uh, she said to him, no, we're moving to Carmarthen Road, not Carmarthen, which was in Forest Fast Swansea. And uh, it turned out, literally, where I lived was um, literally down the lane from him, probably about 200 metres. So... Yeah, three, three nights a week then for, well, eight, nine years. I was going up to Bonnie Mine Boxing Gym with Mario then. And, uh, yeah, obviously he was, you know, he treated me like his own son. So, and obviously my dad wasn't around um, during those times. So, uh, yeah, it was, you know, I stuck to it. And it was just, it was just like 
something I had to do. It was like school, you know, I never took a day off, you know, through summer. Um, I had mates in boxing gyms and stuff and they were taking days off to go to the beach or out on family days out and stuff. And I just felt inside like I, I had to go. I didn't have a choice, you know, I didn't, my mum or parents or whatever, they didn't um, push me into it. But, you know, I just pushed myself into it more than anything. But she did, she did enjoy me doing it and I uh, was um, pleased that I stuck it out. And obviously now, you know, she's proud more than ever in my, in my amateur career. She would never come and watch me. She was always, uh, I don't know, a bit scared to see me fighting or what have you. But, you know, um, I think there was one fight she come to and the, the lad didn't turn up. Um, but, yeah, now she comes to all my pro fights and, um, you know, it, it makes her cry most of the time. So, in um, obviously, in a good way, like, that she's proud. But, um, yes, you know, it's a good feeling to make, obviously, the, the biggest woman in my life proud, like, so, you know. I bet. That, that's a good motivation. And, I mean, it does, obviously, that does lead into, funny enough, into something I was going to ask later, but I'll ask now instead, is um, to stay dedicated for that amount of time when you've mentioned sacrifice, you've mentioned, you know, this dedication, and obviously you're known for being very, very dedicated. What does keep you motivated, you know, to train and to sort of keep going, keep persevering day after day? Because the reason I ask that is for some people, you know, it's, obviously fame, money, this and that. And obviously you've got different motivations going on. So what would you say is like the primary um, motivation for yourself? Yeah, like obviously I started when I was 10. So, you know, my, money weren't on my mind, fame weren't on my mind. Um, uh, so obviously I didn't have no kids at the time and what have you. So, you know, it was literally, I don't know what it was. It was just purely in me. Like I, I just wanted to box and it was just like, I don't know. I just, I just made myself go. It was just something I had to do in my own, in my own little bubble, I suppose. And um, yeah, I just made myself go for all them years. And uh, obviously, when I eventually joined the army, you know, straight away I wanted to be part of the army boxing team. And uh, obviously, I've always had a dream of becoming professional. And obviously, when I reach them goals, I always seem to want to make new goals. So. Obviously, when I become professional, I had a new dream then of obviously winning titles. And um, obviously, throughout my pre professional career now, I would like to help others in some sort of way, you know, whether it be pass my knowledge along or donate to, you know, people suffering or, you know, whatever way it may be. Um, try and take others up the ladder with myself. So, yeah, I mean, let's, let's get into... Um... Your professional career then? I mean, obviously, 11 fights in, Welsh Super Fair champion, you know, I mean, there's a lot to talk about, uh, and, and undefeated as well, so there's a lot to talk about with that. But, I mean, let's start off with um, some of your some of your early fights, or, in fact, actually, let's start off with what it was like to actually turn pro. Um, so, what was the experience like turning pro different to the amateurs, and let, let's sort of start there. Um, yeah, so, I've always wanted to be pro, so, obviously, it was a you know, it was an amazing feeling to turn professional. I wanted, obviously, I would have liked to have turned professional maybe a bit earlier on, but originally 25 was the mark, which is when I turned professional anyway. Um, however, for the first year or two, it was called the contracts were all up in the air and obviously I didn't get no fights. So, you know, if it had started two years prior, maybe I would have had bigger title shots by now and hopefully a couple more wins under my belt. So, um, you know, that was a bit of a kick in the teeth, but... It is what it is, and we have to just get on with it. But um, yeah, it was a it was a great feeling, and obviously with the pros, I think Enzo Macronelli always said to me it would suit me a lot better when when I turned over because of my style. You know, I was more in and out and taking my time rather than in the amateurs just rushing forward. You know, throwing willy nilly and trying to steal the rounds. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I think I much prefer the professionals. Um, I mean, as as I said, it's more relaxed. You know, you get three minutes rather than, you know, a minute and a half, two minutes, or obviously three minutes in the elites. But um, obviously you get the more rounds as well. So you can start off slow and you've got the time then to obviously pick the pace up as the rounds go on. And, um, you've probably been asked this before. I mean, you've, you know, you've probably covered this. But in terms of um, your toughest fight so far, because I know, obviously, you know, we haven't seen the, the best of you yet, or at least I don't think so. I mean, I think you've got some of your best fights, I, th I think, are still ahead of you. But in terms of the fights you've had so far, 
Um, you know, which one would you say is the toughest where you've sort of had to dig deep? Um, and I can cover amateur or professional, by the way. I, I don't mind. Yeah, I've had to dig. I was obviously had to dig in um, a couple of them in different ways, really. Um, obviously, I think earlier on in my career, it must have been like my third fight, maybe, um, that I fought with Dean Evans. And obviously, he had a lot more professional fights um, than myself. Obviously, not all wins, but all his wins were, I think, other than one, were by stoppage. So he was obviously known as a heavy hitter um, at the time. Um, so obviously that was, uh, he was always in my face as well. Um, so yeah, that was a new experience. Um, but yeah, that, that fight went on to, I think, yeah, I think that was one of my draws. Um, I thought I'd done enough to steal the fight, but obviously he was in my face all the time and he, I don't know, he may have nicked around where I thought I was getting the cleaner punches in. Um, but yeah, I think obviously there's been fights, well, there's been two fights where, I've given away over a stone, stone and a half um, because my opponent had pulled out on the week and they couldn't find another opponent in time. Um, so obviously, um, well, one of those fights, obviously I got caught when I was on the ropes on the top at the centre, the soft soft part of the head. Um, and then, yeah, obviously I touched canvas, um, got back up. You know, I thought I out, you know, outboxed him for the rest of the fight. Thought I'd done enough still to pinched the fight, but it was only, a, again, a four-rounder because he didn't want to do six rounds. Um, but, yeah, you know, it was like David Hay and Goliath, is it? Um, it? You know, he was just twice the size of me. So it was, uh, you know, it was uh, one of those things. But, yeah, that was a new experience again, you know, to get up and obviously just crack on. And um, I don't know, box as well as you do after obviously taking that. But, um, yeah, and then obviously, you know, Obviously, the main one um, back in September with Angelo Dragone, obviously the Welsh title fight. So, obviously, that was over 10 rounds again. Another experience where obviously none of us had ever done 10 rounds. Um, and obviously, you get to a point, um, obviously, where you need to get a second breather and you're trying to dig deep to get through until you get that second breather. Um, and, yeah, I think by the end of that fight, we was both probably fucked in the last round or two. And, you know, I had to dig deep again to try and uh, obviously steal their rounds. Um, but yeah, that was uh, prob probably overall, um, that was probably the toughest fight because obviously it was a 10 round fight. And again, he was the si similar to Dean, just obviously in my face all the time. Probably obviously Dean's had a lot of stoppages, but obviously not a full winning record, whereas Angelo had. So it was, um, yeah, it was, you know, all of them were great experiences, all different learning curves and, Obviously, you know, you just got to take the experience, take what you did right and what you did wrong and just move on and hopefully progress in your career. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about the, you know, the Welsh title fight itself, because I've, I've been leading up to that. Um, obviously, biggest career win, um, you know, most rounds and everything like that. Great achievement. Um, so let's talk a bit about that, how that fight went. I know there was a bit of controversy um, uh, you know, around the scoring as well, you know, which has yeah. to be said. Um, but, the, you know, the fight itself, um, first things first, I mean, what was it like to, you know, get a call for a, a big fight like that? I mean, let's start there. Yeah, like, um, obviously, uh, I was obviously looking at a Welsh title fight, but I didn't mind which, you know, route I went down, whether, you know, I'd been lucky enough to jump straight to a British title or what have you. But obviously, I got called out to the Welsh title fight. Um, I wasn't in no rush, um, you know, but obviously, yeah, I accepted the Welsh title fight after being called out. And uh, obviously, we, we eventually got a date after a longish wait. Um, and then obviously, yeah, it was, it was obviously great then to experience a Welsh title fight, not only, you know, um, be involved with a Welsh title fight with, you know, someone else with a big following and what have you, but also to have it, you know, in a hometown, or obviously for Angelo, close to his hometown. Um, so obviously, yeah, it was a, it was a great feeling, and obviously a bit of pressure on for both of us. Um, just, I just gotta cut you there. I just gotta run and get my charge. Yeah, I'll continue. It'll be here. It's just, just yeah, easier than fine. running up and down the stairs. Yeah, no worries, no worries at all. That's what phones are like, isn't it? So, uh, so yeah, so obviously very good win. And I mean, how did it? 
feel to obviously win your first professional title? Yeah, it, it felt great to be honest. Um, obviously, it was a it was a close fight, and obviously, I think you know when it comes to the end, probably obviously I, I did feel it myself. In all honesty, um, you know, obviously he was in my face all the time, and he could have been nicking the rounds that I thought I was nicking because I was like, feeling like I was landing the clearer shots and the more scoring shots. But um, so obviously at the time when we was in in the middle and um, waiting for the decision to be made, it was obviously probably running through both our minds. Oh, have we got it? Have we got it? And then uh, I got my hand raised, and then yeah, it was um, it was a magnificent feeling. In fairness, uh, obviously you probably saw from being there yourself, um, and uh, yeah, it was a, it was a great feeling. But uh, it just obviously make, it makes it gives you that bit of drive then to make you want to push on. And get that same feeling with bigger titles then. And obviously the one thing just just to touch on, right? And I don't want to sort of dwell on this, but there, you know, there obviously there was some controversy um with some you know, with the scoring and people said different yeah. things. Some people felt you were one, some people felt Angelo was robbed, some people were sitting on the fence. You know, it was it was a bit like that. I mean, what are your thoughts on on that whole situation um with, with that fight? Yeah, um, obviously, yeah, after the fight, um, well, me and Angelo spoke um, the next morning, actually, sharing pictures, having a bit of banter and stuff. And um, obviously, he said to me, oh, you know, I've watched the fight back two or three times and I think it could have went either way and stuff. And um, yeah, he said, you know, I agreed. I said, yeah, you know, it could have went either way. I've watched it back myself. Um, and obviously, you know, later on down the line, days, weeks, months, wherever, um, obviously, People were giving their opinions, and um, in fairness, obviously it was in my home city. But then again, he did sell, you know, probably double double the tickets. Um, so obviously, you know, either way it went, it was a close fight. In fairness, and it, it was going to be controversial whichever way it went. Um, you know, obviously, I don't know how he feel feels himself about it all, um, or whether it's just obviously, you, you know, all the comments he's had from people after saying the next morning that, you know, he felt it could have went either way. Um, but, you know, deep down, I did think, I watched the fight back with and without sound, because obviously, you know, with the sound, obviously you're following what they are saying, and it's a bit, um, I don't know, whatever word you want to give it. Um, but yeah, so I watched it with and without sound, and I thought, you know, it was pro maybe a bit closer than what the refs, you know, decided it was. Um but yeah, I felt I was, you know, landing the cleaner shots or where have you. I felt I probably nicked it by probably two rounds. Um, but that was obviously, you know, even like the close rounds where I couldn't really score it. I was just saying, oh, I'll just, you know, give it, give that round to himself because I don't want to be like, if I if I was judging it, I don't want to be like, um, what's it called? You know, t g giving them the ra the other person the round because I, I know them or I favour them or what have you. Um, so yeah, you know, obviously, yeah, obviously the ref was getting a bit of stick for that off people who thought it went the other way and stuff. But you know, it, deep deep down, I I couldn't have um, said any different. Obviously, yeah, everyone's got different points, haven't they? I mean, some people prefer a fighter, especially this day and age. Like a lot of people expect two fighters to stand in the middle of the ring have a tear up, punch lumps out of each other. And that's what they want to see for their money. But at the end of the day, you look at like the likes of Mayweather, Lomachenko, Muhammad Ali, they, they all hit a move and that's, that's the art of boxing. But these days people would just want to get their money's worth and see people pump each other, uh, punch lumps out of each other. But that's not obviously how a, a true champion is going to last his career. Um, not without any um, after effects anyway. So yeah, that's obviously what I see from the controversial side, but obviously everyone's going to have their different opinion and different thoughts, but everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, and I mean, with that in mind now, I mean, look into the future um, for a minute now. Do you think next on the horizon, and I, obviously I know the lockdown sort of messed that up a bit with, with, uh, with delays, but do you think now in terms of your future fights, do you think a rematch with Angelo will be on the cards or are you looking for other belts or, I mean, um, what are you yeah, in? It, it was mentioned, obviously, and I, I did I get a call out in the end again. Um, and obviously, you know, I, I got the first reason why I even had that title fight was because I got called out and uh, 
I accepted the title, you know, and uh, or the fight, shall I say, not the title. Um, and you know, obviously, I went, I went the judge of obviously the score of the fight. You know, I'd got in there, I'd done my job, I come out victorious, and uh, I come home with the title. So obviously, you know, that's that's my goal accomplished. And obviously, uh, I've got nothing to gain from going back there right now. I mean, you know, I come out with there with, with the win and the title, and obviously, it was a very close fight. And I've got nothing to gain from going back there. Um, whereas obviously, um, the opponent's got everything to gain. Um, so obviously, right now, um, obviously, I want to push on now and hopefully, well, fingers crossed, by the end of this year, I was hoping, in fairness, for whether it be a European Commonwealth or a British title fight. Um, but obviously, with obviously lockdown and everything, now that's not going to happen by the end of this year. So everything's going to be pushed back further. Um, but my hope now is, you know, if Saniga can pull it off to get me a, a fight with someone, you know, obviously after this lockdown and time out of the gym now, a warm-up fight, you know, won't go amiss, but someone in the top 10 or 20 at least. So then I can be, you know, eligible or mandatory for one of these title fights because obviously you hear everyone is holding them. I'm ranked like six, seven and eight. Um, yeah. And like I said, obviously, it, you know, at the moment, um, uh, Frampton's ranked number one, I believe, in my weight category after moving up. And um, obviously, I've done a lot of sparring with Frampton himself. Uh, and he, he is a very, very tough guy and a, an amazing boxer. But I want to be getting into them top 10 and getting something out of my career. I don't want to be staying in the same place or, you know, fighting, you know, in the ranks lower than 28 much longer. Obviously, age coming into that. I am got a you know, a lot to go until I pass my peak in time. And the other thing I wanted to touch on is, is we touched a little bit on your on your physical um, training, but what about the mental side of it? I mean, you know, going into fights, what yeah. is your mindset like, um, like your, your mental game? And, you know, do you get nervous before fights? I mean, what, what sort of goes through, you, through your mind on, you know, on the lead up to a fight, basically? Yeah, um, so, so obviously it is quite tough, as all boxers will know. Um, obviously, you've got your you know, next to two months of dieting and training three, four hours a day, um, having a day off a week and obviously sacrificing, going out with your mates or time with your family or your kids or what have you. Um, so obviously, that's tough itself alone. Um, and then obviously, you're traveling around the country to try and get the right sparring and preparation for the fight and stuff. Um, but then, obviously, the closer it gets to the fight, the last month, you're like bang on a strict diet. And then the last week, you're like cutting down your, the meals you're eating or the water you're drinking and you're feeling like headed or whatever. And, uh, you know, and then after the weigh-in, obviously, you have food and all that and you feel great again. You're like, uh, you know, what was all that fuss about? And, uh, yeah, obviously, you're warming up and, you know, I think depending on obviously when you're on in the night, you can't wait to get in there. And uh, for myself, I think the nerves only kick in maybe when I'm putting my wraps on just for those couple of minutes. So, you know, just thinking, or oh, what if it don't go the way you want it to go? Or, um, you know, just thinking or oh, in your head, how, how the fight, how, how the fight's going to go in your head kind of thing. And um, I suppose that just gets the adrenaline going and your nerves going a bit. But once you get in there and, um, you know, I think it's like once you walk out with the music and you've got everyone cheering you on, you just start to go into your own bubble. Um, sometimes they're a bit emotional, but uh, once you get in the ring and start throwing punches, you know, I think it's like, I don't know, it feels different once you get up on the stage after getting off the floor. But then once you start, you know, moving around the ring and throwing punches, it's, um, yeah, you just zone out and, you know, you don't, don't really hear anything else. Um, you probably hear the odd nutter shouting in the crowd there uh, or screaming. But uh, yeah, I, I mean your nerves just all disappear then, and you just you just crack on with the fight and just you know look looking obviously what's coming and what moves you're gonna make from there. You know the other thing um, to to touch on there is does the, does the crowd sort of affect you? Um, I mean you know do you do you sort of th- 
thrive off the energy because I know some fighters say they thrive off of some fighters say they you know they yeah. don't care they, and it doesn't bother them and it's just the two guys in the ring and I know yeah. um fighting around Wales you know that you've seen different sizes of crowds different capacities and so on do you get like any like of the crowd's energy or does it just not not make a difference yeah I mean um I mean most of the fight you just you're just in your own bubble and zoned out and uh obviously you, you don't really hear or think about the crowd but then I suppose at times, um, you know, you, you obviously wanting to entertain the crowd or you switch off and you can just hear the crowd then rather than being in your own bubble. And obviously when, when you're hearing them all, when you're hearing them all um, calling you on or, you know, um, chanting and what have you, it does, um, yeah, it does obviously when, when times get tough in the trenches, it does drive you on, I suppose, and motivate you. And uh, it is nice to know obviously you know when you're catching them with a good combination or a good shot and everyone cheers on it's obviously good to know that you entertain the crowd and you know they're happy with buying tickets shall I say and only a couple more things just to just to touch on before we um before we wrap this up because I know obviously I know time is is a factor as well um basically winning the the Welsh uh the Super Feather title I mean was that the proudest moment of your career so far, would you say? Or is there another moment that sticks out um, in your mind as being the proudest moment um, of your career? Um, yeah, winning the Welsh title is definitely up there, you know, one of the proudest moments of obviously um, in my Welsh or in my professional career, sorry. And um, obviously the your first is obviously um, one of the biggest moments of your career as well, I suppose. Um, you know, because it's obviously that jump up from amateur to professional and something you've uh, had a goal of probably most of your life as a boxer. Um, so, yeah, probably them two are probably, you know, two of the proudest moments of my life. I mean, as an amateur, um, me or Mario Macronelli, we was always aiming to obviously win a Welsh vest. And unfortunately, um, I never entered that many Welsh um, championships and um, obviously got a bit unlucky um, with being robbed and stuff in the amateurs, so yeah, obviously winning a Welsh title was was massive uh, and meant a lot to me in that aspect because you know even though I couldn't win a Welsh vest with Mario at the time, you know God bless his soul, he was alive. Um, obviously, it's you know I, I dedicated that to himself when I did win it. Obviously, I put a post up with a title and I said you know I, I dedicate this to Mario, you know because obviously we wasn't able to do it when he was around but obviously being in the professional ranks is a, a much bigger achievement than I'm sure he would have been uh, over the moon you know to be around himself that's a wonderful um that's a wonderful tribute and it's you know I like that a lot uh only a couple more then the one I mean in your career is there anything that you sort of regret or anything and the reason I ask that Susie is because you know you've made the best of some tough situations and you you know you seem to have always stayed very very positive uh, and every time I see you you're always you know you're always very positive is there anything that you would change or are you sort of happy with with how it's gone so far um, um to be honest the start of my career I mean um so obviously I, I was uh, signed with Alfie Warren, but obviously unfortunately he wasn't able to um, get shows down this way. So it was like Manchester, London bound, and obviously as you know, being in the boxing environment, it's uh, quite hard to sell tickets alone, let alone get a crowd to travel, you know, two three hundred miles up the country. Um, so obviously, you know, in fairness to Alfie, he tried his best, and uh, he obviously gave me the option and released me to um, join with Saniga. Um, obviously it was still quite up in the air but there because obviously I had uh, well signed with Daigar number there and then obviously um, got released then to go back with Saniga so obviously since I've been with Saniga in fairness to him he's um, you know he's got me the fights um, throughout the year kept me busy and he got me the title shot obviously on his own show as well so that was obviously um, another good thing Um and now he's um, obviously he's used the stadium or shall I say leisure centre down here now. And uh, he's personally said to me, you know, I'm going to make this one of my home venues for the boxing. So, you know, he's done great by doing that for myself and uh, obviously the other local boxers down this way. 
So that that's going to help a lot now in the future for you know some more fights. And uh, well, see how things go. I mean, I know they are building a new um, kind of like more point arena next to the leisure center. So you know, if obviously he can pull off bigger boxing shows, even if he can get world titles on on the show and stuff, you know, he could either use that that venue or the Liberty and uh, obviously, yeah, put, push things on to bigger things in my, my hometown. And uh, that would be amazing, especially now, you know, with my son coming up as well. He's he's just turned five last month and uh, he hasn't come to know none of my boxing fights yet. He's watched some on TV and uh, he, he's really interested in boxing. So it'd be nice for him to come along also, you know, if it's home, obviously it's uh, easy enough to bring him along as well. Last question I have really, Tuzi, is, um, you know, talking about that. If you had to give advice to to young boxers, you know, people who are just starting out in the sport, maybe amateur, maybe, you know, just turning professional, or maybe, you know, just getting into um, the sport and in the very beginning is just starting training. If you had to give advice to, like, young young fighters, what would you say to them? Yeah, so, um, depending, obviously, where they are in their career, I mean, back and on to the last uh, question, obviously, uh, I did really finish or touch off on what I was supposed to get to I mean um, obviously uh, the first two two years maybe of my professional career I didn't get a fight so you know I could have I could have in that time you know I could have been up to 20 professional fights by now maybe um, but obviously you know as I said the contracts were up in the air and I didn't uh, get to expose myself in them first two years which you know I, I was well I, I don't know the difference between then and now, maybe, you know, if I watched a few videos, clips back, I would um, see it. But, um, you know, obviously I was hungry then as well. And, you know, I was on top of my game and um, it would have been nice to have had a few fights in them two years. But obviously it was, it is what it is and we have to move on and just get on with life. But, um, you know, in terms of youngsters up and coming to give them advice, um, you know, obviously... Like I did myself, I, I sacrificed, you know, time with family, time with my mates, you know, going out, going out clubbing when fights have been coming up and stuff. And uh, just if if they can stay away from that scene, like stay away from the drinking, stay away from the drugs, stay away from obviously the party scenes because it's it's easy to start drinking and get addicted to them kind of scenes. And obviously a lot of boxers do, and you see it growing up, you know, as an amateur you see so many talented, gifted lads coming through the boxing and then as soon as they get to 18, they experience girls and drink and drugs and they just chuck it all out the window and you think, you think where you are now and you think, you know, what they were like as training partners, outstanding and where they could be, you think, you know, they could have made world titles easily and it's just a shame really to see youngsters throw that away for things, you know, just things that are going to last a few months or a few years and and not do them no good in life. So, yeah, if I was to give advice to the youngsters, it would be obviously to stay away from all that malarkey. And uh, if they really do enjoy the boxing, then stay in the gym, stay dedicated, you know, keep training, you know, and um, just make themselves go- goals and targets and just stick at it, to be honest. Obviously, you know, when, when it comes to turning professional, you know, make sure they choose obviously the right promotional team or manager or coach or what have you so you know they're not wasting years in their career and where it's obviously a short um career being being in the professional boxing world um yeah that's really the the main bits of advice i'll give them to be honest mm, that's a good uh, that's a good insight that's a good insight it's you know it's very good advice i've seen the same i've seen some some very talented lads, and uh, well, same thing. I do agree. Um, yeah. Time for one more, or you, or have you got a, have you got a shoot? No, I, I've got time, mate. No, no rush at all. All right, one more then. That I, that I thought of because you, you touched on um, something earlier, uh, well, just now to do with your community and things. Um, I mean, I would say that you've had like a very positive impact on your community, and you've sort of shown people, um, you know, what's possible with with hard work, dedication, and and whatnot. Um, do you, what sort of impact do you think you've had on your local area and, and on your community? Um, yeah, to be honest, like, um, you know, when I go to town or I'm out in the street, you know, um, 
you know, I get a lot of people coming up to me like, you know, they, they don't really mention the boxing. They're like, oh, I respect what you do for, you know, sick locals and kids and stuff like this. And, um, you know, they, they just, um, I don't know, they, see, they seem really happy about it and grateful. And, uh, you know, yeah, they come up to me and they, they always mention that all the time. And uh, obviously that's, that's nice to myself. Um, it's nice to you and the feeling's nice. Um, and obviously, you know, I've had um, youngsters, which I've donated to, um, you know, and they, I've had been in interviews with them and, you know, just little things like them saying I'm the hero or I'm the superhero and, you know, I'm their best friend and stuff like that. that that's just a, an amazing feeling. That's like, you know, no other feeling you probably get. Um, so again, that's... Um, you know, something that's touching and very aspiring to myself. And obviously, you know, I get a lot of people inbox me and say, oh, you're very inspirational. I love seeing your pictures or your quotes and I love seeing um, what you do for others and stuff. And uh, yeah, that really gives me a drive as well to keep pushing on and doing what I'm doing. Um, and then obviously, you know, there's my number one, my son, and, you know, he, he's my everything. And obviously when, um, when my time's up, obviously I want to, you know, he, he does love boxing, you know, he's only five and he, he loves a little fight and he loves uh, getting involved with the training and stuff. And uh, I've taken him up the gym since he was born. And obviously he wasn't able to go for a year because of obviously the health and safety with the weights and stuff with the new machines. So, you know, now he's at that age where I can start taking him again. And uh, obviously when my, when my time's up, pass him on all of my knowledge. And, uh, you know, I've had loads of people ask me for one-on-ones and, you know, I'm happy to pass on them my knowledge as well and pass on their kids my knowledge and, you know, help my help my boy and others in every way I can, to be honest. It's, it's a fantastic ambition. Uh, could be a you know, future world champion there. Uh, time, will, time will tell. Um, I mean, I think that's, that's everything, you know, that I wanted to sort of cover, to be honest. Before we, yeah. you know, wrap it up, I mean, is there anything um, in particular, you know, that you'd like to say to fans, to people watching, sponsors, anything at all? Or like, a, or are you all good with everything? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'd obviously, I'd love to thank, obviously, all the people out there, um, friends, family, um, people that just know me, um, you know, for buying tickets, coming to my fights, supporting me, you know, all the kind and um, comments and all that, where have you, that I've had all the social media and stuff from themselves. Um, you know, I'd like to thank my family, um, my boy, my boy's mum, my mum, everyone that's helped me along the way, you know, in the, on the run up to fights, obviously doing diet, doing the tantrums, and uh, yeah, obviously, um, also I'd love, love to thank, um, obviously, my sponsors, you know, Arte, Manap. Park Country House, um, R&D Services, um, and obviously all the other sponsors that's helped me along the way, even though some of them uh, don't follow me now. Obviously, I'll uh, put my thanks up there to the ones that have helped me in the past. Um, and obviously, yeah, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can push on now, win some bigger titles, obviously have some better paydays. So obviously, you know, even though I donate um, high percentages of it, it'd be obviously... It uh, mean a lot to me to be able to donate more money and help them in, in more more ways. Like um, so, yeah, you know, I'm very thankful to obviously my coach and my David John and my management team with the Sanigas, um, and obviously Avi Warren from uh, trying to do what he could to get me started and pass pass me on to them. Um, and obviously yeah, everyone who's been involved. If there's anyone I've missed, um, like yourself, you know promoting me and uh, anyone else who's promoted me and helped with pictures and or videos and obviously I've had like BBC and ITV news record me and put me on the news because of my donations and stuff um, obviously I've had Garen Thomas help me a lot with the sports side of the Evening Post and I've been in the paper seven eight times because of the donations on boxing again um, and yeah you know I, I'd like to thank everybody involved who helps me and who is to help me in the future um, get through my career with a successful uh, yeah, career, hopefully all the way through. Okay. Well, like I say, mate, like I said earlier, I mean, thank you for, for taking the time to, um, 
have a chat with me today. I do appreciate that. I do appreciate yeah, it very much. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there'll be more videos coming soon.